हेलो एवरीवन इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द प्रेशर पंप प्री कॉलम एंड सैंपल इंजेक्शन सिस्टीम इन एच पी एल सी इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन सो टूडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट द कॉलम्स इन एच पी एल सी सो कॉलम्स यूज इन एच पी एल सी आर पैक्ड इन अ स्टेनलेस स्टील कंटेनर और इन अ डबल वॉल ग्लास ट्यूब्स जनरली इन अवर डेज ग्लास ट्यूब्स आर नॉट प्रेफर्ड बिकॉज दे विच स्टैंड एट प्रेशर अप टू सिक्स थाउजेंड पी एस आई इफ प्रेशर इज मोर दैन दैट दैन ग्लास कॉलम्स आर ऑफ नो यूज सो देर फोर जनरली द कॉलम्स मेड अप ऑफ मेटल स्पेशली ऑफ स्टेनलेस स्टील और इवन समाइम्स प्लास्टिक्स आर ऑल्सो प्रेफर्ड जनरली द कॉलम्स आर स्ट्रेट विद द लेंथ ऑफ टेन टू थर्टी सेंटीमीटर With internal diameter four to twenty mm. So, if additional length is required, then the two or more columns are coupled together. Now, particle size which is filled in this column. So, particle size of the material is in the range of four to ten. micrometer so you can imagine such a small particles are used the most common column used in hplc is of 25 cm in length 4 to 6 mm in internal diameter and packed with 5 micrometer particle size so such column contains near about 40000 to 60000 plates per meter now generally this columns are operated at room temperature uh, so in gc it's compulsory that there must be a thermostat but in hplc it's not compulsory because generally hplc is carried out at room temperature but uh, nowadays in modern commercial instruments the columns are equipped with heaters which controls the column temperature from 25 degree celsius to 150 degree celsius even they may be fitted with the water jacket to give precise temperature control now whenever we are going to use the columns in hplc the two major types of column packings are used that is pellicular column packing and porous particle column packing so very first we'll discuss about the pellicular column packing now this pellicular column packing consists of spherical non porous glass or polymer beads listen again they consist of the spherical non porous glass or polymer beads with diameter of 30 to 40 30 micrometer so diameter is 30 to 40 micrometer a thin layer of silica or alumina or a polystyrene divinyl benzene synthetic resin or an exchange resin is deposited on this beads that means suppose these are the beads then on this beads a layer of silica or alumina or the the polystyrene divinyl benzene synthetic resin or ion exchange resin is coated on this sometimes even additional coating is applied which consists of liquid stationary phase or even sometimes the beads are chemically treated to give an organic surface layer so these are again chemically treated to give the organic surface and on that the liquid stationary phase is there <clears throat> nowadays generally this pellicular column packings are used for the pre column because their size is larger so generally they are used for pre column or guard column now we'll discuss about the porous column packing porous particle column packing so porous particle column packing consists of a porous micro particles having the diameter ranging from 3 to 10 micrometer so you can compare pellicular is 
near about 10 times larger than the porous particle column packing. The particles are composed of silica or alumina or polystyrene, divinyl, benzene, synthetic resin or an exchange resin. So same like follicular column packing. The silica is most common column packing used. Microparticles of uniform size of silica are prepared by the special technique. So these particles are then coated with thin organic films which are chemically or uh, you can say that physically bonded to the surface. So these are the about porous particle column packing. See the particle size is reduced over here. So nowadays generally the porous particle column packing is used in analytical column of HPLC. Now again we will discuss about the uh, more details of the column packing. Now these column packings are distinguished on the basis of relative properties of stationary phase and mobile phase. Stationary phase and mobile phase. So, how they are uh, distinguished, that we will discuss. When stationary phase is highly polar, see, I am going to write, when stationary phase is highly polar, such as water or triethylene glycol supported on silica or alumina particles and the mobile phase is non-polar. When stationary phase is polar, mobile phase is is non-polar such as hexene or one polyeth polyethylene uh, then it is referred as normal phase chromatography then it is preferred as normal phase chromatography and when the vice versa condition is there that is when stationary phase is non-polar when stationary phase is non-polar of an hydrocarbon and when mobile phase is relatively polar, okay, like water, methanol or acetonitrile, then it is referred as reverse phase chromatography. Then it is referred as reverse phase chromatography. So, uh, this is a difference when stationary phase is polar, mobile phase is non-polar, it is normal phase chromatography. When stationary phase is non-polar, mobile phase is polar, it is reverse phase chromatography. In normal phase chromatography, the least polar component is eluted first as it is most soluble in mobile phase. So, uh, if you are, you can say that solute is non-polar in nature or least polar, then it will elute out first because it is more soluble in mobile phase. In contrast or vice versa condition is there. That is, in reverse phase chromatography, the most polar component will elute out first because stationary phase is non-polar. So, polar component will be more soluble in mobile phase and it will elute out first. Okay. Now, bonded phase packings are classified as reverse phase and as normal phase. So, when bonded phase uh, packings are coating is non-polar, it is reverse phase. And when the coating is polar, it is a normal phase. Mostly reverse phase chromatography column packing, that is this reverse phase chromatography is preferred in HPLC. That is in HPLC stationary phase is generally non-polar and mobile phase is polar. So most commonly R group of siloxane in this coating in C8 chain. That is n octyl or 
a C18 chain that is an octyled chi with such preparations the long chain hydrocarbon groups are aligned parallel to one another and perpendicular to the particle size giving a bristle like or you can say that a brush like appearance okay this the mechanism by which these surface retain solute molecule is not entirely clear so some scientist believes that from the standpoint of solute molecule the brush behaves as liquid hydrocarbon medium which is similar in nature of liquid liquid chromatography while other scientists prefer that brush coating as a modified surface at which physical adsorption occurs the molecules of mobile phase when compete with the analyte molecules for position on the organic surface the longer chain produce packings that are more retentive and they permit the use of larger samples so in this way the in hplc the column packings are used so this is about the c8 and c18 chain now next part we have to discuss which is related to instrumentation is of detectors so very first we'll discuss about the requirements for the detector so detector should be sensitive so that it should be able to detect the amount of solute in the range of 10 raised to minus 8 grams or less so detectors must be very sensitive the response of detector should be linear over a wide concentration range the response time should be as small as possible so that uh, you will get a very quick results it should be easy to operate and should possess high degree of reliability it should have similar response to all type of samples so if response varies depending on the nature of sample then it should be predictable then it should be stable and should possess a very long life and it should be able to detect the components without destroying it so like in gas chromatography in hplc uh, with this all characteristic not a single detector is available so according to the necessities according to the type of sample the different different detectors are preferred now whenever we are going to use the detectors the detectors are classified into two types one is bulk property detector and second is solute property detector so what are what is this bulk property and solute property detector that will discuss the bulk property detector or it is also known as a physical property detector okay so this bulk property detector or physical property detector responds to the mobile phase property such as refractive index dielectric constant or density which changes due to the presence of solute so whenever this solute is present the refractive index or density or uh, you can say that dielectric constant of the mobile phase field changes and that change is proportional to the concentration of sample while solute property detector or also known as a chemical property or electrochemical property detector is a detector which responds to the property of solute so as name indicates it responds to the property of solute like uh, uv absorbance fluorescence which is not possessed by the mobile phase so bulk property detector is measures the property of mobile phase solute property detector measures the property of sample or measures the property of solute so this is a main difference between these two now we'll discuss one by one 
द ईच टाइप ऑफ डिटेक्टर सो वेरी फर्स्ट विल स्टार्ट विथ द सोल्यूट प्रॉपर्टी डिटेक्टर एंड फॉर दैट वेरी फर्स्ट विल डिस्कस विथ द यू वी विजिबल डिटेक्टर यू वी विजिबल डिटेक्टर सो दिस इज अ स्कीमैटिक डायग्राम फॉर द यू वी विजिबल डिटेक्टर द कंपोनेंट्स फॉर दिस यू वी विजिबल डिटेक्टर आर सोर्स कॉलिमेटिंग लेंस दिस इज द एंट्रेंस इट एक्सिट स्लिट मोनोक्रोमैटम सैंपल सेल एंड फाइनली फोटो कैथोड और इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज अ डिटेक्टर सो वी कैन से दैट इट इज सिमिलर टू योर यू कैन से दैट फोटोमीटर और स्पेक्ट्रो फोटोमीटर नाउ विल डिस्कस हाउ इट वर्क सो फॉर एब्सॉर्बेंस मेजरमेंट इल्यूएंट कमिंग फ्रॉम दी सैंपल ओके सो दिस विल बी इन एंड दिस विल बी आउट सो इल्यूएंट कमिंग फ्रॉम द कॉलम इज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन अ सैंपल सेल द वॉल्यूम ऑफ द सेल इज अबाउट वन टू टेन माइक्रोलीटर and the dimensions of the cell are 2 to 10 mm the pressure during the operation is just 600 psi so always whenever you are going to use this detector at that time pressure reduction valve is used uh, so this is very simple so what will happen from the column the effluent or eluent will come over here and it will go out this is source lens monochromator and everything so whatever the monochromatic light will fall on this sample cell that will be absorbed remaining will be transmitted that is transmitted light or you can say that absorbed light is detected by this photocathode a simple photocathode is there okay uh, now sometimes whenever needed you can use the double beam instrument also so in case of double beam instrument instead of this single sample cell the two cells are used one for the mobile phase and other for the column effluent so the ratio of two signals is used to obtain chromatogram now filters or monochromators are used according to the use of photometers or spectrophotometers if you are going to use the spectrophotometers definitely you have to go for the monochromator that is diffraction dating or prism if you are going to use the photometer then you can use the filters uh, same way the source of light will also change according to whether you are going to use uh, visible light or uv light so if visible light is used then you have to use tungsten lamp or deuterium lamp for uh, uv light you can use the mercury lamp or halogen vapor lamp etc is used so that changes are made uh so this is about the uv visible detector which is a solute property detector now next we have to discuss that is bulk property detector that is refractive index detector so this is a schematic diagram for refractive index detector so this is a differential refractive index detector so components are similar this is the source sample cell photo cell uh, the remaining uh, the lens and slit and everything which i hadn't shown over here uh, to avoid the you can say that difficulties so just this is a simple schematic diagram now as i have told you this is a differential refractive index detector this detector consists of a sample cell so this is a sample cell in which the <coughs> there are two compartments that is one is for the sample and second is for the reference so this is a cell compartment and this is a reference cell compartment these two compartment are separated diagonally by a glass sheet so when column if uh, now this is source from the source light will fall over here these are the reference compartment and this is the sample compartment so light will pass through this and finally whatever the light that will fall on a photocathode 
so if in both compartments uh, the same you can say that solvent is there then no change in the path of light if the, there is a change in the sample then the path will change so uh, when column effluent contains only mobile phase the difference in refractive index measured for these two compartments will be zero and when column effluent contains the component of the sample difference in refractive index measured is measured so there is a path change will take place so it is measured and it is recorded so this detector measures the physical property so it can be used for all types of solute it is reliable and unaffected by the flow rate this detect but this detector is sensitive to the temperature so therefore whenever you are going to use this detector at that time the temperature that is operating temperature must be constant as compared to this uv visible detector this detector refractive index detector is less sensitive detector so that's all for today's lecture in next lecture we'll discuss about the more sensitive detectors thank you